Alrighty, so this video is going to be hopefully pretty short and just talk about the fungi, specifically molds. Sorry, that font is really bad, but um, and two things about mold septate versus non septate, hyphae, and the mold life cycle. Okay, and specifically rhizopus, that species within a certain phyla. So, first of all, septate hyphae. So, remember hyphae. Uh, this is one hypha. Hypha is plural, is singular. Hyphae is plural. Um, is just like a bunch of fungal cells that are connected end on end that stretch out and make like one long um, fiber-like structure. This is a hypha. Okay. Um, and they can branch out or they can like just be one long thing. And if they are septate, that means they have septa. separating the cells okay i think of the septa as like little door what doors that separate the rooms and the rooms are like where each nucleus is of the cell is hanging out so these are little nuclei and they're separated by septa because this is septate hypha hyphae plural okay so septate hyphae are separated you can see that here in this little photo from under the microscope you can actually see the septa you will see that in lab hopefully and this is a more advanced trait so the species in uh, ascomycota phylum and the phylum basidiomycota and only these two phyla will you find um, species with septate hypha okay and the thought of it is that and hyphae sorry hyphae is plural hypha is singular Sometimes I'll mix that up, but you need to correct me because you're my students. Um, okay, so uh, think of it like this, like uh, why would this be a more advanced trait? Well, if this part of the hypha is damaged, well then this can just wall off right here at this septa and the rest of this stuff, this material and these cells is saved. Whereas in a non-septate hypha, hypha species, uh, if this gets damaged or cut, like let's say it's cut right there, all of these contents may come out and that's not great okay so this is this is a little bit more advanced in evolutionary time okay so non septate hypha this just is the opposite of what i said there's no septa separating the nuclei so everything can kind of just commingle okay and this is what it looks like under the microscope okay and this is species that are primitive and all other phyla besides ascomycota and basidiomycota so the other three uh, the chytrids the glomermycota and the um, uh, what's the last one zygomycota almost almost lost it there if they are non septate they can also sometimes be referred to as coincidic hypha or hyphae so uh, if you see that in your book or in the lecture texts, that just means non-septate. All right, so if you need to pause this video, because I'm just going to switch gears right away and talk about the life cycle of a typical mold. OK, are you ready? So this is my rendition of the mold, a typical mold life cycle. Um, this is what you need to know. It's sort of based on the one from your lecture slides. Uh, there is a sexual reproduction side over here on the right and a asexual reproduction side. And so a mycelium or mass of hyphae that are kind of like all interwoven um, that you're going to see under the microscopes in lab will have an asexual part and a sexual part. The sexual part will have hyphae that are different mating types so some of them on the sexual part of the mycelium some hyphae will be positive or male those are supposed to be quote marks but they look like little ends i don't know why um, male mating types and negative or female mating types Okay, and I'm going to gloss over the details here, so, um, but basically what happens is a male uh, hypha will fuse with, will, or seek out a female or negative hypha 
and they will fuse together. Okay, uh, this is where um, the genetic recombination of um, of fungi happens, and so you get a little bit of the mixture of these two different types of nuclei, the positive and the negative. Okay. So here's this sort of intermediate step called heterocarygamy, uh, two different types of nuclei, that's all that means, and so that's why I wrote it here out instead of heterocaryogamy. I'm going to write it. This is heterocaryo, and then when they f the nuclei fuse together, it's heterocaryogamy. That forms a zygote goes through meiosis and then what happens is that uh, depending on the species you get a sporangium or the sporangiums here on the left because I drew both types you get this or this you get this or this uh, the one on the left is a sporangium looks like that it looks like a lollipop kind of and the spores are at the top or you get a conidium if it's a different type of species and you'll get very familiar with what species are what in the lab and lecture okay and this is a quinidium um, these are really similar in that they're both spore producing structures and the spores once they're all developed uh, they burst out and fly through the air land some work awesome and when conditions are just right for the spores they will germinate and this is like a enlarged spore germinating meaning hyphae sprout out okay enough hyphae develop and set basically um, hyphae are just like cells dividing end on end and getting longer and longer into those fibers um, when you get enough of them that's a mycelium okay now the asexual reproduction part is real is a lot a lot simpler than that so the asexual part of the mycelium, a hyphae will just sprout either a sporangium or a conidiophore, depending on what the species is, or conidia. Okay, and um, <clears throat> the spore producing structure, and see how it's just like branching off of this one hypha here? It just kind of shoots up and grows and the spores develop and uh, when it's ready it bursts out of the sporangium or conidium and they go through the air they land somewhere awesome and when conditions are perfect like enough moisture and nutrients yada 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 uh, they will germinate grow hyphae elongate and become mycelium and there you have it so take a moment uh, pause this if you need to because i'm about to go on to tell you about rhizopus. Two, three, one, go. So rhizopus is a species of mold in zygomycota, that phylum. I'll write it down for you, part of your lecture. Um, that is, uh, essentially it's the same, except for some key differences here, or dis distinguishing steps in the spore producing structure for both asexual and sexual the spore producing structure is a sporangium that little lollipop looking thing not a conidiophore okay the other difference is that when the fusion of the cells are happening and then happening <laughs> and then the fusion of the nuclei are happening um, it's happening in between two like different mating types, male and female, okay? And they fuse and they form like this big, thick, round, like structure or a coat thing around like where the nuclei fused, and that's called a zygospore, okay? And the round thing, so this whole thing is the zygospore, and it like goes off, the hyphae are longer than this. Um, and that thing in the middle that I colored in purple for some reason, that's the zygote, okay? And so uh, it goes through meiosis and then up pops the sporangium straight out of the zygote and the spores are released when it's time and then they will land somewhere um, and when conditions are suitable, they will germinate. Um, and here, sorry, here's the zygospore. And so you will see this in lab as well.